All right, what's good y'all? In today's video, I'll be going over the steps I use to build a rear diffuser for the Solara. And I also have a little bit of an update for the turbo process at the end of the video. I totally forgot to record an intro for this video. So here's an old roller clip from like a year and a half ago. But anyways, let's get right into it. So here we have the centerpiece from the Kaminari seven piece lip kit that goes on the Solara which I'll be using as foundation for the diffuser build. My initial issue with this piece was that it was made for a single exit exhaust. And you guys know that I went against the grain and had a dual axle back set up for mine. So I figured, hey, instead of using Bondo or some type of bodywork to make this piece symmetrical, why not build a diffuser that covers up that single exit? Since every great splitter and diffuser build starts with cardboard, I threw the centerpiece onto some cardboard so I could get a nice outline for the body of the diffuser. And after about five seconds of careful and precise tracing, I got the shape that I needed, cut everything out, and kind of pieced it together to see what I'd be working with. Then it was time to head over to the Solara and my 96 ES300 that I use as a daily driver. This thing may look like a hoopty because of the paint job, but it's only got 70,000 miles on it and it runs just as good as it did when it came off the showroom floor. The best part about this car, even though it is an older generation, it's pretty much just a luxury Camry and the Solara is essentially a sport Camry. So it's like having two of the same car, except one has four doors. Also, this one doesn't take an hour and a half to clean since I don't have to worry about the paint. But anyways, moving on, I made it to my storage <coughs> garage and I got some advanced body fusion material, which I use to chemically bond our experiment together so I could do a little test fit. Right away, I ran into fitment issues with this piece since I guess it was designed to be installed underneath the rear lips. These two mounting tabs that I just showed on the outside, they wouldn't exactly let the piece line up and center. So in an attempt to quickly resolve the issue, I tried to just break off those tabs and see what it would do, but it didn't line up properly. So I just marked off with a Sharpie where it needed to be filed down at, and then I took it to work the next day. One of the best perks of working in the motor pool is having a vise in each of our bays to use. I got one side of the piece cut and then filed down, which really wasn't too hard, but the other side I had to cut quite a bit, but I managed to make a clean cut and then file it down pretty flat. And I was able to go on my lunch break and just see if it would center, and it did. So after work, I got a little bit of dinner and then immediately went over to my garage so I could do part two of the test fit since I definitely needed to see where the exhaust would line up on this piece. Because at this point in the process, if I were to cut the ABS plastic in the exact same shape as the cardboard, with the ABS plastic being like double or almost triple the thickness of the cardboard, it would definitely make contact with the exhaust and start producing some really funky burning smells. I did one final cut on the cardboard before I ordered the ABS plastic. And while I was waiting on the ABS plastic, I had time to move into a bigger garage. And this garage, quote unquote, is way better than the old one because this one comes with a freaking light. Plus this one has about five more feet of workspace that I can use for future projects. Or in the event of me having to go overseas again, I can store all my stuff in here and the car instead of having to worry about household goods, giving away about $3,000 worth of CIF to some random room in the barracks like they did last time. But anyways, after a couple days, the ABS plastic finally came in and I was able to set it up to get a couple teaser shots for my Instagram story. The sheet of ABS plastic that I used was 24 inches wide, 48 inches long and about six millimeters thick. Next up was getting a template made for the fins. I didn't want them to be too aggressive, so I had them follow the shape of the bumper. And I also wanted them to be level with the spare tire compartment. After making a mark that was somewhat level with the ground, I cut the fin and got the shape that I wanted. It also worked out pretty well because I didn't want the fins to extend down below where the exhaust tips were because I felt like that would just be too, not necessarily aggressive, but it just wouldn't look right. I did a couple last minute cuts on the cardboard to compensate where the exhaust would go. Then I took a little trip to Home Depot so I could get all the hardware that I'd need. Then over the weekend, I went back to the motor pool so I could cut everything. Now in this clip here, it's really hard to see, but I did do like an outline, kind of like a rough estimate of the cardboard piece, but I left a lot of room to spare. I got the jigsaw out and I got to work. After about five minutes, I got the ABS plastic cut along with the fins and I was able to throw it on the vise and get the filing since this obviously wasn't perfect. Honestly, filing was the most time consuming part of this process, but since the ABS plastic sheet was like $80, I decided I would cut big and then file it down to where it needed to be instead of cutting too small and being SOL. Here you can see I kind of got the shape I was looking for. So then I took the fins, 
taped them all together and then filed them all at the same time. That way I would have identical looking fins. I didn't show every side, but I did manage to get all the sides pretty much even. Afterwards, I kind of threw everything together just to see what it would look like. And in this video, I did notice that the curvature of the body was just a little off still. So I threw it back on the vise and did some more filing. Once that was finished, I did a little uh, custom fab work on these brackets since I couldn't find any that were black and shorter than that. Then I went back to the storage unit and drilled holes for the mounting screws and threw it on the car just to see if it would clear the exhaust and it did, so I was able to move on. Next up for fun, I just kind of threw the piece together again with some tape just to see how it would look when it was mounted. Then I threw a piece of tape up on the center of the rear bumper so I could kind of get an idea where center was on the diffuser. And of course, afterwards I used a tape measure to get the real center, but I just wanted to make sure everything was lining up properly. Next, I set up where the brackets would be, drilled them in, and then set everything up on the car again just to make sure it was straight. I marked on the fin where the bolt would need to go, drilled it out, and then sent the bolt through. And on the bracket screws, I made sure that they were a little bit smaller than what they were supposed to be, just in case I needed to make any future adjustments. Then I marked where the two outside fins would go and used a tape measure to make sure that they were equal length from the center one. I used the same exact process that I used on the center fin to mount the two on the outside. Afterwards, I was able to throw it on the car, make sure that they were equal length from the exhaust. And then I did the fins that went in between those two with the same process of the tape measure and got everything set up. At this point, I was pretty much done with the diffuser build. I later addressed these silver mounting bolts with the brush part of a paint pen, and I just painted them black. Then it was off to Walmart for the double side tape that I would use for the centerpiece of the kit and the actual diffuser itself as kind of like reinforcement for mounting. Got everything primed, painted, and here's the final product. I think this piece came out pretty good. It definitely filled in the space between the exhaust tips and the actual bumper itself and everything looks symmetrical now. Mounting it honestly wasn't that hard. I just used the double side tape to set up where I wanted it to go, drilled holes into the bumper that corresponded with the mounting screws on the diffuser and sent them through. Altogether, this project cost me maybe $100 to do. And honestly, it didn't even require that much to make. It was just the brackets, the screws, the double side tape and the sheet of ABS plastic. And even though I don't roll with it that much, Hey, it still works with the underglow like it's not even on there. You can't even see the shadows from the fins, so that's pretty cool. All right, I hope y'all enjoyed this video on my diffuser process. I had a lot of fun while doing it, but before I end the video, I gotta show you guys something real quick. The title does state that I have a little bit of an update for you guys on the turbo process. It may not be a big update, but it is an update nonetheless. Check it out. Man, I found myself some headers, a downpipe, for a while, I was thinking about installing these and just running them in A, but my whole plan on doing this turbo setup is kind of gathering everything that I need and then doing all the supporting mods all at one time. But obviously I'm not gonna be running this exact setup with the turbo as you know, it obviously isn't routed for a turbo. Of course, I'm gonna keep the headers as is, but as far as the downpipe goes, especially with this corner right here, uh, with this being on the front here, I'll orientate it better. That way you guys can see what I'm talking about. All right, I got a little carried away with how I set everything up, especially with these high strength exhaust bolts right here. But uh, this is gonna give you guys a perfect visual representation of what I'm talking about. So essentially this is gonna be the view from the front of the car if these were to be ran like as is. But for the turbo setup, I really wanna focus on kind of chopping up this downpipe because from what this looks like, man, it looks like bank one is gonna feed into bank two and vice versa. Like, I don't know, I, I love these headers, but this pipe right here is killing me. So the idea I have right now to kind of fix this, and I'm not necessarily saying it's broken, but I kind of want to set this up just a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna cut that intersection. I'm gonna see if I can't have it ran in like a U formation type deal, where it intersects, makes like a Y, and then does like a complete U-turn. That way it's not as much of a T and it's more like a, like a Y, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and then I'll have it cut here and then ran up and this is, you know, obviously the rear bank and I'll show you guys on my car what I'm talking about. So I'm thinking of having that pipe run up from behind the engine and kind of snake through here. Obviously, you know, this intake piping isn't gonna be right there, but have the turbo sit like right here. I'm gonna do a battery relocation. I think I already said that in my previous video, but I'm gonna have it sit like right here and kind of face the front of the car uh, and then have the down pipe for the turbo almost run parallel to that pipe that ran to it and then come back down and then run out the back of the car like nothing ever happened, you know? 
And of course, while I was filming, I noticed this little guy is trying to talk to me. So we're gonna have to go replace that soon. If I don't address that soon, we're gonna have some, uh, we're gonna have some fun check engine lights. I've ran into that situation before in my old car. It stalled on me out of nowhere. And I was like, yo, what in the world? I checked under the hood and this, this was completely split in half. So I'm glad I filmed this and I could see that. But anyways, this is just kind of a rough draft, kind of a, a sketch essentially of how I want to run things. Uh, I'm just glad that I have the headers and I have a pretty decent sized portion of the fabrication taken care of because when I went into this, I initially thought I was going to have to get headers custom fabbed. I did not think in a million years that I'd find these headers for sale. They just happened to pop up on Facebook and I was like, bam, like just like how I bought the car. As soon as I saw a message, you know what I'm saying? But man, while I'm filming here and I'm just looking like, yo, I could really install them right now, but I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna let temptation get me. I'm gonna wait on it. And also because loud does not equal fast. But man, that would look dope. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna end the video right here. Uh, I'm really excited to making progress on this car. I think what's next, I'm gonna start getting into fuel injectors and the actual fuel pump itself. I'm gonna see if I can't recreate Jim's fuel mod. I don't know if anybody has uh, Jim's fuel mod for sale, but I'm gonna try and recreate that. I've been trying to find part numbers and stuff like that. I have the part number for the fuel filter, but I just have to get the, the specs for all the lines and stuff. Uh, that way I can do Jim's fuel mod on this as well. Maybe here in the near future, I'll do a video on doing a brake upgrade. I'm gonna see if I can go to a junkyard and find myself a 96 ES300, kind of like the one that I have and see if I can't find some brakes on it or I might just order them new. But if you look here, you see that the 96s have dual piston brake calipers, which means better stopping power. And I've been told, and I did a little bit of research, apparently they bolt right on to the Solara. So that's gonna be better stopping power. Apparently it's a lot more responsive, it's a bigger pad. So I'm gonna see if I can't get the front brakes done. And then I might look into doing the rears as well. Cause those rear brake calipers, I'm talking about feel like that big man so we're gonna see hope you guys enjoyed and uh, i guess stay tuned